Hello everyone and welcome back. This is part two of our Boolean series in geometry scripting. We're going to look into how to dig some tunnels using dynamic meshes and Booleans, combining the two. Should be pretty good, so let's get started. Before we start working with an actual mesh, we're going to want to set up our input actions. So we're going to go into our third person folder and into inputs, and then inside of the actions folder, you're going to right click, select input, and go to input action. I named mine IARMB, which just is short pan for right mouse button. And if you open that, which we'll see that there's not really anything going on in here. It's pretty empty, so just leave that alone. We'll go up a level into inputs, and then you'll see IMC default. You can double click that. I'll drag it on over here. I'll delete this because I already made it. So you go plus sign on the mappings, scroll down to here, and you'll see IARMB, that input action we just created. Then you'll click this little symbol and you'll go over and right click and that'll give us your right mouse button as the hotkey for that new input action. Next step is to go into our third person blueprints folder and find our third person controller. Let me drag that right over here double check and I am recording that was a sweet thing that happens my mic was turned off last time so we have our enhanced input action right mouse button and we want to do something we're gonna on completed we're gonna want to set a line trace and we'll do by channel and we're gonna get our self so type right click type get self Let's get the player pawn. Let's see, is it owned pawn? No. Player pawn. Hold on. Get player 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 pawn. There we are. I guess you don't have to get a reference to itself. We just get player pawn. All right, cool. Get the world location from that. What the heck? Let's cast it, cast to third person character. And as always, I'm doing this freaking live. I'm not doing some pre-practiced, pre-ordained thing. Although I did already set this up with my own experimentation and I'm kind of trying to recreate it. So anyway, let's say get world location and let's just go from the mesh. That's what we want right there. We'll say from start, and we want to do, we want to say forward vector, get, or is it right? Get forward, come on, get forward. What the hell? Make forward maybe? What happens if I just type vector? What is happening? Oh, geez. From the mesh, my bad. <laughs> Forward vector. Okay, I thought I was going crazy for a second there, which I probably already have. But anyway, so you want the forward vector from the mesh, not from world location. So sorry to waste your time. Get here, we're going to multiply this. And we actually want this to be a float. Single precision is fine. Let's say like 300 for now. And we'll plug that into end, connect these. Let's do some draw debug for duration. Five seconds is good. Compile. And let's test it. Whoa, that was interesting. What's going on? We got some weird lag happening for me. So if you right click, uh-oh, that's strange. Do you know why? Because we got to add this back to the end location. And we'll plug that into end. That way we're adding a forward vector from our mesh's location and not from origin, which is in that corner. Okay. So this still is weird. You notice that it's almost going to the left. So instead of forward vector, let's get right vector. 
it's the little things in this Unreal Engine that make you go, hmm, strange. All right. Cool, so we're drawing a line. We're gonna wanna raise that up, obviously, so it's more in the center. Let's do a little add pin here, and let's go like 150. See where we're at with that. Right click, um, making all kinds of mistakes because we want to add also 150 to this one. So it'll give you some time to catch up if you're falling behind or if I'm going too fast. I'm trying to like save time, but it also ironically that's causing me to make mistakes, which is awesome. So let's go test that. Okay, still too high, but you get the idea. So let's switch this to 100. And moving on to the next step. So now that we've got our tracing from the center of our character, let's create our dynamic mesh. So in our tunneling blueprint folder, we're gonna right click, go to blueprint class, and we're gonna go dynamic actor, and I believe just the mesh actor, not the generated mesh actor. Go BP, we'll call it base tunnel for now. Open that up, I'll drag that across here. And if we open this up, we got a viewport. Not a whole lot going on. Let's delete all this. We're going to create a function. So in the function section, let's say a little plus sign, we'll call this dig tunnel. And if you remember from our previous booleans, what we like to do is allocate a compute mesh. This, if you read that, it says request a compute mesh from the pool, return a previously allocated mesh, or return a new one if the pool is disabled, a new dynamic mesh will be allocated and returned. So this is like a virtual mesh that we can work with. And let's uh, append a box. This will be the you could use a different shape, but this will be our tunneling shape. So I'm just gonna put like tunneling shape, shap, shap dubs. All right, let's grab our dynamic mesh component. We want to get world transfer. Oh, oh yeah, it's all coming back to me now. So we're getting our world transform. But something that's very important, and this will not work unless you do this, and this took me a while to figure out in several videos, is that you're gonna wanna say, grab this transform return value and say inverse transform location. This little thing right here is like a million dollar secret. I don't know about a million dollars, but you know what I mean. It's, you gotta do this or it won't work. And that took me, I just like spun my wheels over and over again, trying to figure out why the heck is it not carving out? It's literally there, but this is why. You need to inverse the transform location. I'm not even gonna to pretend to understand what that means. So anyway, moving right along. Inverse transform location, we're gonna plug that in here. And let's set a dimension of this box to 200 by 200 by 200. That way we got a nice little hole we're digging. We're gonna grab our dynamic mesh component. Let's say get dynamic mesh right here. Move this out of the way. We wanna apply our mesh Boolean now. So apply mesh Boolean, Boolean, Boolean. dangle these out of the way just because it bothers me when they're that close together actually no we want a target mesh there what in the world this is our tool mesh yes okay so from this is our virtual mesh that we're using as like our virtual carving tool thing box you're going to plug that in a tool mesh we want to get our dynamic mesh as our target mesh that we're carving out of and that'll be the example which will be a cube for now once we do that, you gotta whoop, release all 
real. <laughs> Release all comp compute meshes. Cool. All right, so that sums up our tunnel function. It's pretty simple. Um, before we move forward, we definitely want to create the box that we will be digging through. So we're going to do that in the construction script. Probably should have done that first, but it doesn't matter. Either way, it works. Let's get our dynamic mesh component. We're going to get dynamic mesh and plug that in. We're going to promote that to a variable. Let's call that dynamic mesh. And then we're going to reset it. Once we do that, let's append our little box, which will be the box that we're going to be digging through. You can do a different shape if you want, but a box will be simple and I think a box would be pretty efficient. Question is, would a sphere be more efficient than a box? I am not sure. Doesn't seem like it intuitively, but then you look at collision meshes and you start to wonder, is a sphere collision more efficient than a box collision? If so, what kind of black sorcery is that? All right, moving on, let's do some tessellation. I don't know if we should, but we should. This will kind of subdivide the mesh. We don't need three levels, let's do two. And then let's set our com collider. I suppose we could just use our dynamic mesh variable, but I'm already here. So like, let's set collision as simple, simple collision, wait, complex as simple collision enabled. That's a mouthful. So we set that to enabled. That'll allow us to bump into our box mesh, which if you go to viewport, we can now see it. So that's nice. This will be the mesh that we dig out of and we'll dig a 200 by 200 by 200 cube in front of our player. Um, last thing, there's one more step. We got to grab our third person controller that we wired up earlier. And where we do that line trace by channel, if there is a hit, we want to break that break hit result. Oh, we're going to need a reference to our mesh because otherwise we can't call our thingy. So let's say uh, call dig function on mesh which means if we want to call the dig function on the mesh, we're going to need to spawn the mesh somewhere and get a reference to it, to is, to it. Cool, so let's do that in the begin play. All right, so in our third person controller, we're going to go into the event begin play section and we're going to spawn an actor from class. And this is going to be our base tunnel. And we need a transform for it. So I'm going to split that. So I already created a vector. This is from earlier, not on video, which has this location, which is like in the corner of my map. You can use your own location, but if you want to copy this one, just create a vector uh, variable. Let's call it. Um, tunnel box location and you can copy those values if you want it's just 2520 and 2200 we're going to plug that into our transform location and then once you do that I'm going to take this from the old one this is kind of repetitive for me but new to you so go into here you're going to promote this to a variable uh, Promote to variable. This won't work because that's from a different class. So we'll say, all right, we want to set this. We're just going to call this our base tunnel ref. And that'll allow us to work with it and get that function that we want over here where I said spawn the mesh. That's good to go. And then we want to call dig, refer dig function on the mesh. To do that, you're going to get your reference and you're going to say, all right, call dig tunnel. And this is if there's a hit, so I'm going to say branch. And actually, we're going to do hit component. 
or hit actor. We should probably do a check to make sure that the hit actor is actually our base tunnel. Or base tunnel. This might be too much. I'm already going in too deep. We should probably back out of that little thing because that's going to cause problems if it doesn't work. I'm going to move all this because this is from the old stuff. Do do do. Okay, so let's say if there's a hit and it is our base tunnel type, that's not going to work actually. I think it's going to go to child class of. There we go. We'll say do, 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 hit actor get class. That'll return a class. And we'll say is this the child class of base tunnel? And then plug this into here. That is a little extra sauce that you don't necessarily need, but it, it will come in handy in case you're hitting things and you don't want to call that tunnel dig function. All right, we should test it. I should probably put a comment here, but maybe it'll work first try. Let's see. All right, so we'll right click and we got our little arrow. Let's go over to our box. This is the box we created. If I right click, oh, I am now teleported inside. What just happened? Oh, geez. <laughs> That's cool. I accidentally forgot some important step. I forgot to do subtraction. That was a union. So I guess this can be used for more than Boolean. So you can actually add to a mesh if you wanted to do some sort of in-game runtime custom mesh creation. That's a cool feature. Maybe we should make that a video. Not really necessary since it's already in here as a bonus. Okay, so we're looking for base tunnel. There you are. Go into our dig and where it says apply mesh Boolean, we want to subtract. I'm honestly like super excited for this because I feel like a lot of people are going to make some really cool stuff. So yeah, there you go. And now you can dig by right clicking. You can jump in there. Right now it just digs in front of the player in a straight line. So we might actually want to lower that so we can walk through it. Yeah. And so you can imagine like in a game where you want to do building destruction, and since buildings are generally simple shapes, it would be a little more efficient. We could take out a chunk of the building and spawn a bunch of meshes via Unreal Engine's Chaos Engine or something, and just really have super awesome destructive building meshes. Like, I'm excited for that. Um, I don't know if you guys played Red Faction when you were younger. I did, and there's a tunneling system, and, I, and me and my friend just used to play that. Like, that was the game to us. So we would just dig around like that was the game. We'd build tunnel bases and try to like hold out against the enemy. So anyway, that's enough anecdotal evidence of both of my bleh, history, whatever. So that's Boolean tunneling using geometry scripting in Unreal Engine 5. It's an experimental feature. I have high hopes for it. It's not super performant, but as computers keep getting more powerful, then I'm not sure how much that performance is going to matter, you know? Like, especially if we're using simple shapes. This might be a good addition to voxels as well. All right, well, be sure to... Hold a little bit. All right, well, I hope you like that. I hope that makes you or helps you build cool stuff. I, it's an interesting feature. Kind of excited to see what people do with it. Um, be sure to like, leave any comments if you got questions or suggestions for other videos, and follow and subscribe for more. Got more videos on the way. Watch, I wonder if we can cut all these out and it'll still float. Huh. Just hanging on by a thread out here, man. Physics, baby. Physics.